take our seats this morning. Amen. I know it's a little cold out there, so I'm sure you want to be here rather than be out there. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the Lord's house one more time. We're here in our, our Sunday before Christmas. Amen. It's strange, but every once in a while, Christmas falls on a Sunday. Amen. I think that's just appropriate, amen, for what we're celebrating, amen. So, yeah, if it was up to me, we'd have Christmas on all, every Sunday, amen. So, uh, we will be having Christmas service. We'll be having service. It's a regular Sunday, amen. So, we will be having service. So, so let, us, let us be aware of that because God... God is a wonderful God. We, you know, the thing is, we celebrate his birth at this one day a year, but we should be celebrating it all the time. As Christians, we need to spread his birth. I know Easter is a death, but we should be celebrating that all the time. Amen. So let us remember that. As we get ready to start our service, I pray for, as our people come in, that they're where I know, and i God, I understand that a lot of people are going out of town on this holiday season, but those who are here, we expect to be in service. Amen? Amen. So at this time, once again, we're going to have our sister Patsy's going to give us a congregational number as we uh, begin our worship experience this morning. Amen? Amen. Tell it all. 
church praise the lord this is this is the reason jesus is the reason for the season and this is the day that the lord has made and we should rejoice and be glad in it we should just be glad to be alive i know i was i tell people to watch the news and they say no i don't want to watch the news it's too depressing it's all about death yeah. and i said soon as the season came up i said these are the most trialing times of our life right now because we want to be happy, but people are losing family members uh, by getting so many people have died in the last week, getting shot, killed, stabbed, and just on Blackstone, just on Blackstone. And one of them happened to be a, a close friend that I grew up next door to. She lost her son and, uh, you know, we want to be happy through these holidays, but long as we got Jesus Christ, we're going to be all right. One of my elders said, son, I don't know what you're doing with your life or how you're living it. He said, you, you could be living it wrong and you could be living it right. But he said, if you don't put God first, you're going to be wrong. So I put God first in everything. And it's real important for me to show up in service and be here to represent him. Our scripture reading today is going to come from Proverbs. And I like this because it says, um, my son, forget not the law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For the length of the days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and the truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck, write them upon the table of thy heart. So shall there find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust not, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Be not wise in, the, in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord and depart from evil because there's so much hate and evil going on in the world. I felt like that was the scripture that God wanted me to read today. And I pray that somebody get the meaning and understanding and the blessing from receiving and hearing that word. Um, you still want to do the prayer? Okay. Brother Daniel is going to come do the prayer. Thank y'all for coming in this morning. Like he said, we're going to have Christmas Sunday, so come in here and let's blow the roof off. Let God know that we really love him the way we're supposed to. Good morning, church. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just want to thank you this morning for 
another day. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for waking us all this morning to be here among us, brothers and sisters. I thank you, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for all the praise and worship. I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for Sister Patsy, who's here every morning. And Lord, it's cold, Lord, but she's here and, and she's doing. Lord, I just thank you in the name of Jesus for her, Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for all the magicians that are uh, here today. Father, I pray for them and their families, Lord, and we know that the holiday season, um, Christmas, and all the kids running around, toys is crap up my grandson. Paw Paw this, Paw Paw that. But I know, Lord, that he's a blessing, and I thank you for him, Father, in the mighty Amen. name of Amen. Jesus. Father, I thank you for my pastor and his beautiful wife. Every Amen. day, Lord, I I can call him and talk to him about anything, Father. Right. And I thank you, Lord. Thank you. Continue to working on him, Father. As I'm going through the deacon and training, me and my brother Ed here, Father, he's a wonderful teacher, Father. Continue to work on him. We just love you, and we magnify your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand of praise. Joy to the world, Andre, play that. We're going to do joy to the world. Joy to the world. I'm trying to get in the Christmas spirit here. <laughs> That's the key you gonna play then? Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing.
at this time, we will have our response of reading it's in our bulletin. If you don't have a bulletin, raise your hand and the usher will give you one. But it's coming from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 6, the King James uh, Version. So if you have, we please stand as we go into our responsive reading. They'll, they'll be back to bless us with another song in a little bit. All right. I'll read the, the light, and you guys read the bold portion of our responsive uh, reading. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation. But when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zula and the land of Nephitim, and afterward did he more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. The people that walked and guarded them came in good Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy and harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Let us read that one more time all together, for this is what it's all about. For unto us is a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. At this time, we'd like to acknowledge we have any visitors here this morning with us. We have any visitors this morning? Amen. Any visitors? Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. She's really, she's really not a visitor. She's been here many long. So just stand up again because your name was mentioned last week. Come and give your name. Sister Doreen Montes, she, she was with the was mentioned last year. I mean, not last year, last service, amen. She even called the church this morning, I believe, to make sure what the time was. So, God, this is a wonderful God. We're getting ready for... We're going to prepare for our altar prayer, but there's a couple, there's one thing I want to do. I hope everybody received the newsletter that went out concerning what's going on in the church. And in that newsletter, we had a place where new members that had joined, and we had at least six uh, uh, new members that joined. And, and so God is working with us, amen. And, and we know the holiday season to get a little sparse, but we have some certificates for our new members. And uh, Sister Phillips, would you come up and amen? It's one of our new members, amen. She just lived past year, and she and she she's been working ever since she joined. So we want to bless her. Let it be known unto all men that Sister Mary Phillips is a member in good standing of the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church on this 18th of December. Reverend Richard Norman Pastor. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I have another one. I don't know if you'll be able to hear me, but this person is also a member, and I forgot to put him on the list, and he's very well known by me. Amen. Because he has the same name that I have, amen? So, 
This is Richard Norman II. He's a member in good standing with the Mount Olive Missionary Amen. Baptist Church. He's, he's busy doing our live stream. He probably doesn't even hear. Richard. <laughs> Richie. He's busy back there. Come on, son. He is a he is not only a member here. He's also a church clerk when it comes to our business meetings. And he is in charge of our media ministry. Amen. Amen. So he's a member. All that you see on YouTube. Facebook, he's the one that's helping us get that up there. Amen. So yeah. my, my son, and we're very proud of him and the work he's doing here. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, son. Thank you very much. There's several others who are not in tennis now, and we'll get theirs to them when we they all come together. Okay. Victor Gaza Hernandez Jr., he joined last Sunday. He is the grandson of Ardeen. Amen. Amen. Deidre Shaw, she is also a member here. This is the one we're praying for that's having some, some medical issues, but she's a faithful member now. Latoya Tucker, she's not present, but she's always at Bible study and prayer meeting. Those who are ten, they know she's there, and she and and she's a wonderful person because sometimes we think we got to go to all these big words to pray. And Mother Gillery and the rest of us are on prayer. We know she's a, she she makes it easy, but it's so sincere you can't help but think that that prayer is going somewhere. Amen. Amen. She's a wonderful person. We have a brother who joined, Brother Joe Mays. Uh, he joined a, uh, last week also. He's out ill today. He called to let us know that. But he's also joined us this past week. Amen? Amen. We have a sister, Sister Sarah Silver. She's not here. She's going through a few things let's keep her in prayer that's s-e-v-i-o-r and so let's keep her in prayer but she joined us also this past year we also have a deidra thompson she joined us this past year amen Maisha Sanders, also a new member who's joined us this past year. <laughs> Reverend Jesse Keys, he's joined us this past year also. Uh, he was here for our celebration, and he's a member also at Mount Olive. Amen? Amen. So God is good. God is a wonderful God. It is time, it is time for altar prayer. And we know prayer is needed in these days and times. Even though this is the holiday season, it's also a season where uh, people are going through a lot. Our dear sister Carolyn Farley, she wanted to be with the Lord. And now that family, that service was yesterday, will face this next Christmas without their mother, without their grandmother. So it's a time of, of trial also. So let us keep that. In and so at this time, I, I'm going to ask my, my lovely wife to lead us in an altar prayer. This time I'll let her read those on our sick list. Um, so... Uh, 
our, our dear brother, our new member, Joe Mays, he's not on here, but let us remember him also. Let's keep him in prayer. If you know somebody in prayer, let's keep them in prayer. If you'd like to come, yes, sister. Okay, a grandson. Amen. Those who want to come around the altar, if you feel that you would like to, just come around the altar. If not, you can be, stay at, at, in your seat. Amen. Amen. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice, lady? Your heart does the spirit control you can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and so some of you remember that come on brenda you know you know that oh is your all on the altar of sacrifice your heart does the spirit control your heart does the spirit control Find peace and sweet rest as you yield him, as you yield him your body and soul. Amen. You can keep humming that and play that a little bit. Is your all? We're praying for Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church. All churches in the name of God, they need, they're standing in the need of prayer, so we pray for all churches open in the name of Jesus Christ. Deacon Guillory at the, the Armenian home, brother and sister Harrison, and heard from them this week, brother Harrison was in the hospital and he's been released to home, I believe now, so they're asking to continue to pray for that family, brother and sister Harrison. Mother Guillory, one of our dear mothers, we pray for her and lift her up as she continues to lift up her husband. Mother Helen Jackson, Bernita Russell, Deborah Udall, Glenda Smith, brother and sister Lattimore, God bless them, we miss them, and family, Natasha Williams and family. Brother Williams, uh, Washington, uh, brother Washington, I believe he's still at St. Agnes, uh, hospital we're praying for him he's praying for his wife and she's worried about him now because he's not eating so we want to keep them in prayer um brother bruce norman my husband brother he's going through cancer treatment now so we want to keep him in prayer margie kennedy mother margie kennedy at morning star home um we have called from uh, our brother dear brother joe mays this morning they had to rush him back to uh the VA hospitals for complications he's having. So we want to let him know we are praying for him. We lift him up. And we lift all of you here at the altar. God knows your heart. He knows you don't even have to tell us. Just tell, take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to him. He understands. Take it to the altar and leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. And, and the song says, if you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Just take your burden to the Lord. Whatever it is, you can call it out. If there's someone that you're praying for in your family, you can call their name right now. God can hear us all at the same time. If there's something burden on your heart that you can't even mention to us, that's all right. Just take it to the Lord in prayer. Leave it there. Leave it there. If we take even our church to the Lord in prayer, leave it there. Don't worry, Don't worry about it. If you're going to pray, why worry? If you're going to worry, why pray? Don't make sense to do both. Just leave the burdens at the Lord's feet because he cares and he knows all about us. So, Heavenly Father, we come lifting up your name right first of all and thanking you for the blessing of being able to come boldly before your throne. 
Father, we come asking and le leaning not to our own understanding, but know that you work all things out for our good. Everything might not be good, but it works out for our good when your hand is on it. God, place your hand on our lives. Place your hand in our circumstance. Stir up the gifts in each and every one. Let them know, each and every one, how important they are to you. Because you sent your son all the way from heaven down just to save a wretch like me. I thank you, we thank you. God, you didn't have to send your son, but you did. You didn't have to love us like you did, but you did. And we glorify you. We, we can't say thank you enough if we had 10,000 tongues, God. It wouldn't be enough to say thank you for all that you're doing. And thank you for all the provisions you made, Father. Some of we have a roof over our head. We have food on our table, God. We have clothes on our back. And we just want to thank you. Because everybody doesn't have that. But God, you saw fit to get, have mercy upon us. Mercy suits our case, God. We need you right now. We need you. This dying world needs you, God. If we look at this pitiful situation, God, where there's envy and strife, where there's hatred throughout this world, but God, you're able to step in and shake up the world, God, and make a new, new beginning for us that we can stand together as one body in Christ, as one church, one faith, one baptism, standing on your promises. You promised never to leave us or forsake us. God, we're trusting in you, God. We can't do nothing without you. We want to lift up your name, God. You said if I be lifted up, I'll draw. And I believe your word, God. We're standing on your word. Your word shall not fail. So God, we can't stand on each other. We can't stand on my knowledge. But we stand on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus, you'll take us through. Any burden that we face, God, you'll take us through. Any heartache we have, God, you'll take us through. Any type of situation of sorrow, God, we don't hold our head down. We look to the hills which come with our help. Our help comes from you, God, and we call upon you. You said we can call upon you. You hear and answer prayer, God. Hear every prayer, God. Hear every name that's called. Hear the burdens of the heart, oh God. And not only hear, but you'll answer. Answer, Father, and speak peace as you did in the storm. Speak peace, oh God, as you did to the wind and the waves. Speak peace, oh God, so we'll have a strong foundation just knowing that you are our God. And there's nothing that can overcome us. There's no burden too strong. There's no problem too hard. There's no hill too high. No mountain who's so high. No valley too low that you can't reach us. Reach God. Touch it with your tender mercy, God. Touch right now. Touch right now, oh God. And give us the strength to go on. In your name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad I came to church this morning. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to call our music department to come usher into a time of praise. Then after that, we'll have God's word by our own, own brother Bobby McGee this morning. God is a wonderful God. As my wife was praying, I was thinking about my brother. I appreciate the prayers that are going up for him. He is going through cancer treatment at this time, as she stated, and also the situation, the problem is, is one of the tumors is near his heart that causes some issues and problems. So keep him in prayer, for I know we serve a God that is able. Even when doctors give sad news, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't take that, because he has the last word. Amen? Amen. Don't never give up on praying for somebody. No matter what the situation, don't stop praying to God says it's time to stop. Amen. At this time, our music department is coming. Amen. In their own way, whatever way that is. Amen.
was harrowed yeah. by the angel <laughs> born in a lonely manger the virgin mary was his mother and joseph was his earthly father three wise men came from afar they were guided by a shining star to see King Jesus where he lay in a manger filled with hay. Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Come on, come on. Jesus, Jesus, so holy, make him mine. New life, new hope. The Virgin Mary, she was his mother, and Joseph was his earthly father. Three wise men came from afar. They were guided by a shining star.
Thank you, choir. Thank you. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. On behalf of Pastor Norman, I know he wants to shout and say thank you. Thank you. That was so beautiful. Father God, it's, it's just so much. You know that's inside of me right now. So much, Father God, that because of your goodness, if I live for, if you allow me to be here for 200 years, I wouldn't care a thousand years, Lord. I still couldn't get everything that's inside of me out of me concerning your goodness. So God, through the guiding of the Holy Spirit, I ask you this day, right now, because your presence is here, oh God, I ask you to bundle up what you would have me, Father God, in the period of time to say what you would have me to say. And let nothing, Father God, fall on deaf ears, but let it do that, which you already purpose it to do, oh God. I thank you. I love you. And we will always give you the glory, oh God, that you so deserve. You're so deserving of it. You died for the sins of the world. You gave so much. You gave more than my mind can even grab a hold to concerning your promises but I thank you and this I do in Jesus name amen man choir <laughs> the songs that was sang this morning is just all over my messes I mean, it's just completely over my entire message today. Especially the last song that was sang. Because there were some words in there. It says, new life and new hope, new joy you bring. Mm -hmm. And I said it to say this right here. I want to read something. It says, in Luke 1 and 35, it says, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be called, shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. That holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The virgin born Son of God was the second person of the Holy Trinity. He was given. Unto us a son is given. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God sent his only begotten son down from heaven. He gave his son to mankind. He was made flesh and dwelt among us. John 1 and 14. Charles Wesley said, Late in time, behold him come, offering of the virgin's womb, veiled in flesh, the Godhead, see, hell, the incarnated deity, As man with man to dwell, Jesus, Emmanuel, hearken, the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. That's here. Yes, that is here. And I think about, because I gave this a lot, a lot of thought this time of the season. 
And I thought, I said, man, this is the season that we celebrate. And we celebrate with songs. We celebrate with gifts. Uh, the wise men, they brought gifts. And we, we just celebrate. We celebrate through, it, through how we treat one another. We love each one another. We're smiling at one another. I remember those times where when people used to, in their neighborhoods, and this time of the season, and we used to just... You would see people with smile on their faces and saying Merry Christmas. I remember, but this is the season for that. This is the season where we really acknowledge the time of the child's birth, Jesus Christ. But then I thought, I said, Lord, you sent your son here, and I hope my daughter. She lives in Vegas. Her name is Tansy. I hope she's uh, listening. I hope my son, who I invited, and he has a lot of Caesars he has. I hope he's, uh, he's not here, so I hope he's listening. And so I said it to this, and I said it to say that, uh, and back to what I was saying is that, When Jesus came to earth, but when he was born as a child, I thought, I said, well, did he just come here just to be born? Pastor Norman, people of God, did he just come here just to be born and then live here for 33, 33 and a half years, and die for me and your sins, and then go back to heaven. And Mother Guillory, and after going back to heaven, just leave John 3, 16 here for us, the gift of salvation, Sister Wendy, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Did he just do that? And I am thankful for that. But I thought further than that because I thought I said, well, God, you said in Jeremiah 29 and 11 that you know the plans that you have for me. You said also, there were some things you said that you told me that you had to go back to the Father. You had to go back to glory. But we couldn't just be born and immediately follow you. So could have, if I could have just been born and come out of my mother's womb and go straight to glory, then that would be okay because I would be, not have to deal with the things that we have to deal with here on this earth. I wouldn't have to deal with sickness. I wouldn't have to deal with certain people. I wouldn't have to deal with financial problems. I wouldn't have to deal with none of those things that we're all, everyone in here, has faced some of those things in some way, shape, or form and are facing something in their life today. So God, if you're the God that died for the sins of the world and then you're that God that also reminded me, you said, why you came? And then I have to understand why you came because you told me, God, you said, okay, I came, look at this story, look what I put here, because I told you I come in the volume of a book to do thy will, O oh God. And so now you can kind of see why I came and what's available to you. So my message today is that when weak faith meets a strong Savior, what happens when our weak faith meets a strong Savior? My weak faith. Because sometimes my faith is rattled when my kids or my son is sick. My faith is rattled 
Because it's good when everything's all right. When my finances get to the point, and it's to the point where I can't pay my bills, I can't even go out and buy groceries, or I can see what's in front of me, and I can see because I lost my job, and then now only not did I lose my job and now my finances, everything that I saved is running out and then all of a sudden, then now I get, I hear the news of now I'm dealing with sickness or my kid is going through something. Or just like I heard yesterday what the man said, the young lady that died, which I know, the, the pastor in there said that, that was my wife's best friend. My wife had a stroke. Then he said, after my wife got out of the hospital, she was there. She said, one day, she's over at our house helping my wife, which is her best friend. And he said, this day, she's just singing. And she's just around the house, just singing and everything. And then what had happened? Then she decided to cook. Sister Norman, she decided to cook dinner for them. And as she was cooking dinner, he said something happened. He said, the grease fell. The hot grease, and she fell in it. Mm. And through that hot grease, when she went to the hospital, guess what? That's when she found out she had the cancer. What happens when weak faith meets a strong Savior? Yes. And then if you want to go further with it, see, I didn't know this. Then they said the same lady one day, she became paralyzed. She couldn't do nothing. She was in her house. And me hearing the story, if I heard it the right way, then she's in her house. She's in her bedroom. At home, by herself, her place got on fire, caught on fire, and she's in there by herself. And she was trying, but she couldn't, she couldn't move. She's paralyzed. And now she's telling the story to him and his wife. And she said, all she could do, what came out of her mouth is, Jesus, help me. And then she said she found herself on the floor. And she was able somehow to pull and manage her way out and she got out. And she said, that's when I knew God was real. Yeah. What happens when weak faith meets a strong Savior? Mark, the ninth chapter, verses 14 through 29. Well, let's read here. It says, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Then, got to read the whole story. Immediately, the father of the child cried out. The father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. He said, I believe, but help my unbelief. Yes. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly and came out of him, and he became as one dead. So that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. He arose out of his situation. What happens when weak faith meets a strong savior? I want to read an a old news article that I came across. And it says, U.S. News and World Report said in recent issue, in a recent issue, in the United States, 27 million adults 
and 7.5 million children have a diagnosable mental disorder. More than the combined number of people with cancer, heart disease, and lung disorders. For many, that mental disorder is anxiety, worry, and a fretful heart. The man in today's story was in the grip of an understandable anxiety attack. For his son was in a crisis. Our greatest worries are often over those we love the most. Perhaps the only good thing we can say about worry is that it sometimes drives us to the Lord. In our story today, it brought this father to Jesus. But once there, his unbelief threatened his receiving of the Lord's help. While worry may sometimes drive us to the Lord, it can dominate our prayers that we have trouble claiming God's answer by faith. Perhaps this father's case may help us understand our own. Let us know this case carefully and observe the suspected difficulty. Trouble's going to come. And I don't care who you are. And that's why we have to be careful. I'm learning. I haven't got there yet. But we have to be careful with our words. And we have to be careful how we view people when we see them going through something. And sometimes we with our little uh, religious hats, sometimes all we want to do is when we see people going through something, the first thing we want to do is tell them, you know, you just need to have faith or you just need to trust God. That's all you need to do. And either the times I say myself, either the times when I have said stuff like that and told people to just trust God, them were the times that I didn't want to be bothered with them. <laughs> because I knew it was going to cost me something. See, it was going to cost my time. It was going to cost some of my little bit of money I had in my pocket. You know, it was going to cost me something but especially, it was going to cost me the time that it took, the time that re God required me to take, because he commanded us to go out and preach the gospel. And it was going to cost me the time it was going to take to rightly, because the Bible says we rightly divert or divide the word of truth. And it was going to cost me time to sit there and explain to that person and tell them, not just trust God, but to walk them out through the process. It was going to cost something. Because the Bible says there is no greater love than one that laid down his life. My Uncle Tyree, he used to say, don't ever say you love me if you ain't willing to do nothing for me. See, because love is an action word. Yes. Love requires you, and love will cost you to get so much out of your comfort zone. I love being in my comfort zone. I love that because it's easy. And I'll say this, as a husband now, I am learning so much. And being in my comfort zone is not one of the places God required me to be because he said men love your wife as Christ loved the church. I'll put that one in there. <laughs> the other time when I put it in there, I didn't want to put it in there, but I didn't know God had set you up. <laughs> so let's look here and see what the father thought. What did the father think? 
it says, number one, it says, the disciples were incompetent despite their bravery. They seem unable to help. Sometimes other people, despite, even despite their good attentions, can't relieve our need. Sometimes even our Christian friends in the church appear to be powerless to help. Because the man with the son, before he got to Jesus, he had talked to the disciples. And then when he got to Jesus, and read, that's why I said read the story, he said, they were unable to help me. You sent them out, but they were unable to do it. And there are some things that we should not get disappointed in. Well, we think, Brother Dre, people should be there for us, and they should be there to help me. And they might want to help you. Or they might give you advice, and they mean well in that advice. And that advice could either mislead you or really not even help you at all or even cause more confusion. But at the same time, just like the disciples, what they wanted to do, they were unable to do, but they still had a heart to do what they wanted to help that person, even though they wasn't able. And because sometimes people, and we look for people to bail us out, we look for people to give me money, can you give me this, can you do this, or can you do that? Or whatever it may be. And we look for those things. And what we have right at our disposal is Jesus. And we just have to take is dim as our situations look sometimes, we have to take our weak faith and say, Lord, I know you able, because if I ask everybody in here, I said, do you believe God can fail? And no one will say, yes, I don't believe he can fail. He can't fail. Do anybody believe God can fail? No one. So, and I really believe that from the bottom of my heart, and I know everyone in here believes from the bottom of their heart that God can't fail. And if we believe that God can't fail, why sometimes... Does our faith get rattled? Ain't because we less than a Christian. I love God. And I'm learning how to fall in love with him. But I love him with all my heart. But I'm learning how to love him the right way. And I'm learning how to embrace the things that he's made available to me. So don't beat me down when you see me slip in certain areas. Don't beat me down when you hear me maybe make a mistake in an area in my life or say something that, oh, you're supposed to be a Christian. You shouldn't say said that. Don't beat me down. Because Paul had already told us, I'm not perfect. But I'm forgetting, just like this man with the son, he had a need, but he went to a Savior. And all the Savior asked him, do you believe? He just asked him, and he didn't beat him up because of his unbelief. He said, I believe, sir. But I'm struggling in some areas. Because I, I'm at the verge of seeing my son die. And I'm in dire need. And these men couldn't help me. I went to them. They couldn't. Couldn't nobody out here help me. The doctors couldn't help me. My child is sick. The doctors couldn't do anything. And so, yeah, I believe. But I'm coming to you. Because it says when we go to God, we must believe that God is. And that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That man, even though... He was lacking in errors in his belief system. He diligently went to God. Understand that. He went. Even with weak faith. So when weak faith meets a strong savior, things change. Yes. Yes. 
Because that young man, he got up. And he was weak and he got up. And strength, life came in his body. So the child, Jesus Christ, when he came to the earth and he was born and he walked up on this earth and he died for the sins of the world and he resurrected back to heaven. He left, but he knew that we were going to follow along. He knew. It didn't surprise him that after he left after 2,000 years that Bobby McGee was going to be born, Sister Norman was going to be born, all of us was going to be born. It didn't surprise him to where God said, oh man, I didn't put in for that. And so I didn't put in that for that and then because they're going to have some troubles. So because I didn't put in for that, I can't help them. He knew all of that. Because he said, I'm at the beginning, I'm the alpha, and I'm the omega. I'm the beginning, and I'm the end. And I'm all between, and I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I was there, I was there for you even before you was born. I'll prove it. Ephesians 1 and 4. Read it. I, first, love you before the creation of the world. Brother Turney, what do Ephesians 1 and 4 say? Somebody. According as he has chosen us, according as he, hear me, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. That's why I always say, so I can get it and all of us can get it. God loved us so much that he had already made a way for you to come out of it before you got in it. That's why he told you, I'd never leave you nor forsake you. I couldn't get myself out of some of the troubles that I've been in. I had no plans to have my life when I was in, out there to be here, standing here preaching the gospel. That wasn't in my plan, nowhere in my plan. But it was in God's plan because God said, I know the plans that I have for you. That's something else too about you and your free will. See, we think we have a free will. Jonah thought that too. And when the well got finished with him, whose will was he doing? All right, talk to me. Because some of us had, I had my free will. I thought I had my free will. I was out there on a mission one day. Some of us too. I'm not the only one in here. We were doing some things that were, we were headed directly to hell. That was taken, because the Bible says the thief come to steal, kill, and destroy. And I was following the thief because I wasn't saved. But Jesus came and stepped into my life because he said, I brought you out of darkness into my wonderful life. And then he said, I came that you may have life and have it to its fullest. Life right here on earth. Yes. Abundant life. Yes. Life over my circumstances. Life over my sickness. Life over my finances. Life over my relationships. Whatever it is. He came to bring life, and he's not just come to bring life, he's able to bring life. And able while we're going through what we're going through to give us peace that surpasses all understanding. He that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I ask or think, and then with the resurrection power that lives within me. Because greater is he that's in me than my circumstances that's out in the world. So if I don't have peace because of my circumstances, it's not because of God, because God said, my peace I give you. See, when he healed the lady with the issue of blood, when he said be healed, he said, but go, lady, and take my peace with you, he gave me his peace. See, he's the, that was the same God. So that same peace that he has given to me, if I embrace it, despite of what's going on, it can't rob me of it. 
See, if I lose my peace, it's because I lose my focus. My focus changed. It changed from him to my situation. So the problem was hopelessness. The boy's disease was fitful, mysterious, and terribly violent. We sometimes forget the Lord delights and work that is impossible and possibility. The Lord delights. That message last week, and Pastor Norman mentioned it today about your dad in the military and about what took place and what happened to him when he got bit by the what, scorpion. When he got bit by that scorpion, and sometimes, like Sister Norman said, them scorpion bites at the time doesn't make sense because what he was trying to do, he was focused over here, but the scorpion bite took place to get him over here. All things work for the good for those that love God because God had a plan for his life. See, his will was to be here, but God's will was for him to be here. But see, if God would have just said, I need you to leave these people and go here, he wouldn't have left them people. And God has told us that we need to leave some situations in our life or some people or some relationships and go over here, but we're not going to go over here because we so focus on the flesh and we so focus on walking by sight and not by faith. And then because we're not in tune with the things of God, we can't hear when he's speaking anyway. Why can't we hear? Because the devil is drowning the Holy Spirit's voice out because you spend more time with him than you do the things of God. So you won't hear it. And then so what did God, what do God have to do sometimes? He have to move us out of our comfort zone. Despise not the chastising of the Lord because the ones I love it, I correct. That's why Jonah, Jonah didn't have to go in that well. But Jonah and his rebellious spirit caused him to go in that well. But when he finished, then he ended up right where God told him to be. So if God called us to do something, you're going to do it. I don't, know, I don't know who I'm thinking. I'm like, man, I'm not doing this. God called me to, I am not doing it. Pastor Norm, I'm just not doing it. If God called you to ministry in the church or whatever it is, or wherever, outside of the church, on your job, wherever he's called you to, might as well do it. Because you're going to end up doing it. You can do it with a limp or you can do it without a limp, but you're going to do it. And so, and I know, I got some limps just like Paul. And I got some that want to go, I would love God to take them away. But just like he told Paul, because I have appealed to him, Lord, take some of these financial situations that I had created, that I had to work my way through years of getting rid of, take this away, take that away. He said, no, I ain't going to do that. But my grace is sufficient for thee. Because, see, Paul appealed to God but Paul was serving God and trusting God. God just told him, no, I ain't going to take it away. But I give you the means to get through whatever you got to get through. If it's financial means, if you need the money to pay for this, or you, need, you ain't got the dodge, I, I'll give you the means. Just be about my business and I'll take care of yours. See, because now you have attached. We, just like me and my father are one, then you've attached because you're about my business, then you attach your name to my name. See, then, so now I'm responsible to take care of you. I have to take care of you the right way because I need my name to be lifted up. See, I know your name, Bobby, can be drugged through the mud. 
just like in Acts the 19th chapter. But the name of the Lord, his name can't be drugged through the mud. So now, because I'm about my father's business, and now I come in his name, now when the demons look or the situation look, it says, it don't say no more, Paul I know, Silas I know, Jesus I know, but who are you? I'm no longer the who are you because I come in my father's name and everything has to bow down at my father's name. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So the birth, it goes way beyond just a child being born. See, I, I, when I see the birth, I see some great things. When I see the birth, I see healing. You read it in the, in the thing. For unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given. And his name shall be Mighty Counselor, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Mighty God. The government shall be up on his shoulder. Not the world's. I don't care what it looked like. He said, walk by faith, not by sight. Getting towards the end. The tearful discovery, he said, with tears. His small faith discovered his unbelief. Sometimes we have just enough faith to realize how weak our belief really is. Isn't, that isn't great faith, but it's enough to start with. If we have just enough faith to recognize its own, its own weaknesses, if we have enough faith to realize its own weaknesses, we have a place to start. God has a foothold in our hearts. Sometimes in rock climbing, all you need is the smallest crevice for a foothold or a tiny crack to insert a finger. He was distressed at the sight of his own unbelief, worry and anxiety, and unbelief is a great sin. It, keeps, it kept the children of Israel out of the promised land for 40 years unbelief and doubt unbelief and doubt if we don't do anything about our unbelief because the Bible says we should go from glory to glory and I guarantee you that same father that said yes I believe help my unbelief that same father, if you would have been there and you would have talked to him after everything took place, I guarantee you, where he was lacking, then he was no longer lacking. And so though we struggle in areas, and I heard Mother Guillory say something, and she might not remember what she told me. She said something, she said something about paying tithes. And she said years ago how she started out. And she said some things were a struggle, am I right? In the belief system. But now she just rests in those things. And that's what Paul was talking about. Paul said, it's not that I am perfect yet, people, or been perfected. He said, but this one thing, and this is faith here. He said, this is one thing that I do do. He said, I'm forgetting what's behind. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of whole. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Can you not receive it? I'll make rivers in your deserts and streams in your valley. God's, this is God's word saying that. And so God, all he wants us to do is that I know I'm not perfect. And I know I struggle in some areas. But one thing I do do is I'm forgetting how to act in this area because I'm pressing on towards this. The things that I used to do, I don't do no more. Some of the places that I used to go, I don't go anymore. Why don't I do those things? Because God, hear me, God is holy. 
There is no sin in him. The priests, when they went in to atone once a year for the sins of the people, they had to go in a certain, they couldn't go in any kind of way. And when we come to God, we can't go any kind of way. And so when we go and he says, walk by faith, not by sight, I don't care what your situation is, if it's unforgiveness, if it's whatever it is, he's just saying to practice my way of doing things. That's what Paul was saying. I'm forgetting what's behind because I'm pressing on towards what's ahead. I press on towards the prize of the upward calling that's in Christ Jesus. Everything that's in heaven that God has for, I'm reaching towards it. And I'm grabbing a hold to that prize because I have to be here on this earth for whatever how many years. But while I'm here, I want to give glory to who God is. So when I lift him up, I'll draw all men unto myself. And that's what was so beautiful about today. And that's why I said what I said to the choir. This is a beautiful thing. We got up and we sang this. I see this church. I'm even, at first, I would say it, me and Norman, Pastor Norman would talk about it. And I would I say, this place is going to be full. I'm telling you, we are going, it's going to just be full of people. And I said, the only thing we got to do is just be about our father's business. See, things, obstacles are there. And when we have short in our finances and stuff like that, and we like, we don't need to worry about that. God, that's God's problem. We can't fix it anyway. If I sit there and complain about, oh, well, we don't have enough time. We ain't getting enough money in and da, 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 da. If I sit and, and I'm about my father's business, if I sit and worry about that, then that's just a distraction. That's to get me focused on, to lose my focus from what God has called me to do. Because he said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things that you can't fix, I'll fix. I'm the God of perfect order. Because if we don't worry about them things, don't even pay tithes anyway. Don't pay nothing. Don't give no money. Don't give no nothing. But if you believe what God says and we practice being about his business and God is a holy God, what we're walking into. That's why change is taking place and he allow us to come in that presence and each time when we're practicing those things and we're getting rid of that old person, what we're doing, we're moving in more into the presence of God. We're just moving because God is a holy God and sin can't go into his presence. You can't take all your junk back here and say, I'm going to take all my hatred, all of these things, and I'm going to take this into the presence of God. He know we have those things. And he know we struggle with our unbelief. We trust him. But he's just saying, just practice my way of doing things. And if you practice, when you come to me and you believe that I am, and you believe that I'm the rewarder of them that diligently seek me, and if you diligently seek my word, and you practice doing it, guess what? Change is automatically going to take place. And we all know that some of the things which we thought we couldn't do as Christians, all of a sudden, now we're doing. We're doing it. Some of the people we maybe thought we couldn't love or forgive, then we're doing that which we, why? Because we're practicing God's way of doing things. And last of all, I just want to read here. Didn't finish my message, but God, I guess, didn't want me to. So, uh, not the way I thought anyway. I want to read this. And it says, haven't you heard? And this is in Isaiah 40, starting at verse 21. It says, haven't you heard? Do you not understand? Are you deaf to the words of God? The words he gave before the world, the words he gave before the world began. Are you so ignorant? God sits above the circle of the earth. The people below seem like grasshoppers to him. He spreads out the heavens like a curtain and makes his tent from them. He judges the great people of the world and brings them all to nothing. They hardly get started, barely taking root. When he blows on them, 
they wither. The wind carries them off like a chaff. To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal? Ask the Holy One. Look into the heavens who created all the stars. He brings them out like an army, one after another, calling each by its name. Because of his great power and incorruptible strength, excuse me, strength, not a single one is missing. Oh, Jacob, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? Oh, Israel, how can you say God ignores your rights? Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depth of his understanding. And then here's my verses right here. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youth will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion but those who wait up on the Lord he shall renew their strength they shall mount up as wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint God is able what happens when we faint meets a strong savior. Father God, I just thank you, Heavenly Father, for the message that you've given me, oh God. I thank you for everything you're doing here in our lives, here at this church, oh God, Mount Olive. I thank you for my pastor and his wife, oh God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending them, Heavenly Father, and putting them in the position, Heavenly Father, here at this church, oh God. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, for us, your people, Heavenly Father, that we're just learning to embrace, Heavenly Father, the gift that you have given us, O oh God. For you said every good and perfect gift comes from you, O oh God. And so, Heavenly Father, I thank you once again for what you're doing. And I thank you and praise you right now for the wonderful things that you're getting ready to do, Father God. I say, Heavenly Father, yes, we are becoming such a big light, Heavenly Father, on such a high mountain, O oh God. But you're equipping us for the task, O oh God. You are equipping us, and we just thank you for it because it's only because of your grace and your mercy, O oh God. So Father God, I thank you for everyone up under the sound of my voice. I call them, oh God, blessed and highly favored, Heavenly Father. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, that every one of our needs, Heavenly Father, according to your good and perfect will, Father God, we don't understand some things, but it'll work out for our good, Father God, if we trust you. So I just praise you for it, Father God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that my sister Deborah, her mother, Miss Jennings, She's in stage four, stage five. Oh God, I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have authority even over that situation, Father God. That doesn't scare you. <laughs> you can speak to the storm if it be your will, Father God. But I acknowledge, Father God, we are not to live in this body for eternity. She's an older woman. But if it be your will, Father God, touch her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, oh God. Just the same thing with Pastor Norman's brother, oh God. You were able, Heavenly Father. You was resting when the storm was raging. And they asked, don't you care? And then you just got up and spoke to the storm, oh God. And you said, peace be still. Well, Father God, speak to Pastor Norman's brother's situation right now, Father God. According to your good and perfect will, oh God. Do that which you are only able to do, Father God. And you will receive the glory, O oh God, in this situation that you so rightfully deserve. 
even before it takes the place. We're giving you the glory. In the name that's above every name, and at the name of Jesus, let us all say, Amen. And now turn it over to Pastor Norman. Thank you. Amen. Let's give our speaker a hand of praise this morning. All right. I cannot assume that everybody in the house is safe. So this is time for our, our invitation. First of all, we want to see if anybody here has relationship with Jesus. We want to know, is there someone who didn't understand about the faith he was talking about? The faith that we, weak faith in, in the strong Savior. That, 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 that Savior is Jesus. I was tell you this morning that that Savior, you need Him, Amen, in your life right now. There was a gentleman, a, a pastor in L.A. E. V. Hill. He wrote a book, and I read the book. And one of his sermons, he talked about it was a Savior worth having. A Savior worth having. He went into the qualifications of the Savior. And when I finished reading, there's nothing I can argue against him, Mother Gillery. At the time he finished it, he, he was right. A savior worth having. Is there one? Perhaps you're already saved, but you don't have a church home. I invite you to join with us. My brother was talking about how he sees a vision of the church being filled. We've been adding, as you said, saw this morning. It's gradual, but God is still working. We're not a perfect church, but we're loving church. Perhaps you desire a church home. So we had welcomed Mount Olive to you. We welcome you to Mount Olive. I want you to understand this, that as he spoke, we, we're concerned about finances, yes, but we're also concerned about the souls, amen. That, that's, that's what we need. First seek the kingdom, and all this will be added unto us. So let us remember that once again, salvation, relation with Jesus, church membership. Amen. Man, we're getting ready to prepare for our tithes and offering. Before we get into that, as the deacon and usher gets ready, a reminding that we're still collecting money for Jackson, Mississippi. they still got a water situation going in there. So let us remember that. Also, uh, I know we've been Christmas shopping. Amen. Yes. Some of us, at least, amen, we out there making sure we get that certain gift for that certain person. We know we're celebrating another gift that's this coming Sunday. Three wise men brought him gifts, so let, let's give an extra gift this, this Sunday or next Sunday. And financial gift. He's, he's got all he needs. He's back in glory. But let's see if we can do a little something in that as we move forward. Amen. All right. We're going we're gonna to have them come read. I tied that couple announcements. Yes. Hmm? Come on. Remind him something my niece said, you know, when you go out to eat, some of you go out to eat, right? We go out to the restaurants, and um, the tip they expect you to give now, they put it on, on, the, on the little receipt, starting at 15%, right? And my niece looked at that, she said, wait a minute, they can't get more than Jesus. He only asking for 10%. Y'all gonna give these people 15%? She said, uh oh, they can't get more than Jesus. So just think about it. Think about it. Jesus only asking for 10%. When you go out to eat, they asking for 15. Amen. That's that's our niece Moretta. We call that the Moretta quotation. Say nobody get more than Jesus. Amen. Amen. So let us remember that. Okay, let's give some giving music. Return see, I got a couple announcements, then we'll be leaving amen all right some good giving music brother andre kind of make a one reach in a pocket
once told, let the Lord have his way with you. Because guess what? He's going to have his way in the end. Just like he did when you were born. It was his grace that gave you life. So let us pray for what we have given to the Lord. Father God, thank you for the blessings that we have received, the tithes and offerings. Bless those who give and bless those that couldn't give. Father God, we want to thank you for these tithes and offerings, for what it's going to do to build up the church, to build up your kingdom, and to build new lives through Jesus Christ. Because we know today, Father God, that Jesus is the rock and the foundation of the world. He's the way and the truth and the light. But God, you carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. And you have our best interests at hand. So when we come to you, Father God, we thank you in every way possible for all the things that you do for us and all the things that you will be doing through us as we continue through these holiday seasons. And we know Jesus is the reason. And we just want to say thank you to the Most High. In Jesus' name. We all say, Amen. Blessed Lord. Amen. We thank for the tithes and offering. If you be out of town next week, you can drop your offering at the church. And if you are on social network, there's ways of giving them also. We're about to leave. But once again, for those who have experiencing those remember, the, these, this pandemic is still with us. We know we're not getting much advertising, but it's still with us. There's several members in the church I've spoken to and I asked why they're not here, and they have caught COVID. And so uh, in the bulletin is a location, African American Coalition, to get your booster shots. Amen. They got one booster, this last booster. Make sure you get that one. Amen. Because my son got that one. He's been going strong ever since. And everybody else is getting sick. So get that booster shot. And the information is there. There also is a coffee fellowship for a donation next door. So go over there and get, have a cup of coffee and a muffin and talk to each other right next to the Children's Church right across the way. Amen. They had Sister Lynn Rogers and Sister Ardeen have been working on that situation amen uh, listen listen uh, this is something i don't usually do i don't usually don't make snap decisions i usually think about it. my wife say stop procrastinating you know act exact talk it uh, sometimes you say talk since we're having christmas service and it's christmas on christmas day uh, deacons there will be no deacon training class there will be no sunday school class everybody spend time with their family in the morning then come here at 10 30 to spend time with god amen is that all right is that right all right so i don't want y'all say god family god family which one i'm gonna go to this way you can cover both of them amen Amen. I won't put no more on you. You can bear like the Lord said. So let us remember that. My, is there anything else? Okay. I have to make sure my calendar is clear and I'm doing it all correct here. Amen. Uh, also, I just want to know if you, you got your weekly newsletter. We're going to try to make, we're going to make that. No, we're not going to try. It's going to be quarterly. Uh, and there's some things coming this year. We're going to try to have our dance situation. We have a young lady who's going to come in and help us get the dance ministry started again. And Christmas Day is going to be hopefully an inaugural time for our children's church to start up again. So, uh, so let us keep that. So we're moving back into where, we, where God has taken us. Amen. So let us all stand. Let us all stand. Don't forget the coffee next door. They picked a good day because it is cold outside. I can't see. Should have my wife come and do this because I didn't have my eyes on. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord lift you in his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Number 6, 24 and 26. You go and have a wonderful rest of your day. Amen.
Rest up. Don't get don't don't get all caught up in that last minute Christmas shopping. 